So in the previous lecture, we talked about how the ABS calculated the consumer price index. But with any statistical figure, we have to question the reliability of the figure. And the CPI is no exception. And there are always limitations to figures such as this. So for the CPI, there are four major limitations that may uh, hinder the reliability of the figure as a measure of inflation. So firstly, we have the lack of representativeness. And so we know that the CPI chooses 100,000 goods and services from metropolitan households. to calculate the consumer price index. So firstly, we, we know that in the economy, there are vastly more than 100,000 goods or services available. And so we need to question whether the, whether the 100,000 goods and services selected is appropriate to calculate the overall inflation rate of the economy. And similarly, because prices are only taken from metropolitan households, we need to question the validity of whether this is also this is also representative. So again, what about rural or country households? Would their spending be different to metropolitan households? And in most cases, this would be yes, but because of resource constraints and because of different, say, geographical constraints, it becomes impractical for the AB, ABS to measure the, the entire basket of goods and services available in the economy because these goods and services are constantly changing and it becomes impractical for the ABS to measure, it, measure a new basket of goods and services every year or every quarter. So that's the first limitation to the CPI is that there is a lack of representativeness in the regiment or basket of goods. So let's just note that this is a regiment. Okay, so the second limitation is very similar in that the weightings of items may not be appropriate. So we know that although the ABS actually changes these weightings every every so often, so every few years to to help make these weightings more representative of the prevailing economic circumstances. So, like, say, a new fashion has entered and people enjoy wearing say jeans, then they would weight jeans more heavily in the regimen for clothing or in the subcategory of clothing. And as people move to chinos in subsequent years, then they would weight chinos more heavily relative to jeans. So they, they are changing the weightings every few years. And this is very, um, this is good in the sense of that it may represent the total or the overall um, relative importance of certain objects or certain goods and services to consumers as years go by. However, we must question now whether this may appropriate may be appropriate for all households. So, is it appropriate for all households? Appropriate for all households, and probably not. So, let's take an example of where this may not be appropriate. Say we have a vegan household. So they don't eat meat. And so what happens here is when the price of meat goes up, and because meat, typically um, most households do eat meat, this will represent a very high weight in the CPI, and therefore this would cause the CPI to increase. And just for, ex for the sake of this example, we're going to say that the CPI increases from 4% to 5%. And so inflation is above the target range, and therefore this may induce some some level some level of consumer uncertainty, and therefore confidence would dip. 
But to vegan households, this wouldn't actually matter because inflation, the underlying inflation, was due to the increase in the price of meat, possibly because of some disease. And hopefully this doesn't happen to Australia, but let's say, let's say the um, price of meat increases because the supply of meat decreases. This wouldn't affect vegan households because they don't eat meat. And not, even though the CPI has increased here from 4% to 5%, this wouldn't actually affect their spending or purchasing power because they don't eat meat. So that's a very basic example of how weightings of items may not be appropriate. Another, another example could be, say, lactose intolerant people and the price of milk increases, or dairy. So it wouldn't really affect their spending because they don't actually consume this. But it becomes very hard to tailor the CPI to every specific person, and therefore that is another limitation to the CPI. Thirdly, the inflation rate includes volatile items and these are usually one off changes so as we know a few years back there was a massive tropical cyclone in Queensland and therefore the banana prices increased around fivefold so they went up to from like two dollars a kilo to around 15 20 dollars a kilo and it was it was crazy and this was also included in the CPI. But these are one-off or once-off volatile events that actually affect the headline inflation rate. So it may have increased from 4% here to 5% due to an increase in the banana prices. But this is a one-off event and the next year when crops start to grow again, then they tend to, to go back to or revert back to their normal stage. Okay, let's just rub this out. So we know that representativeness is actually a limitation, and let's just chuck this here. So we have one is representativeness or lack of. Two, we have inappropriate weightings. And three we have down here. So let's look at another example of how the the ABS actually tries to counteract this problem of inappropriate um, or like volatile items that affect the one-off in inflation changes. So what they have is they have four different types of inflation. They have what this called the headline. So they measure everything in the regiment. So this includes 100,000 goods and services in the regimen. So that encompasses one-off events such as banana prices increasing. What they also have is they have the underlying inflation rate. And this is more representative of um, underlying economic circumstances. And what this means is that they get rid of or account for volatile changes in price. And so what this means is that, so we have three. So what this means is that they don't include banana prices in the calculation of inflation. Another inflation rate they could use is what they called the trimmed mean. And what the trimmed mean suggests is that they only include the median or the the average inflation rate in the economy and lastly they have the weighted median so here we have the 50 percent we have the 50 percent middle band so they only include if you draw out the entire rate of inflation. So we have some, some products that go up 0% to some products that go up 50% and this is included in the 0 first percent quartile and the fourth quartile. If you split this up into three quartiles the trimmed mean only takes into account this 50% band 
of inflation. And that is wrong, representative of what the average change in prices are. And the weighted median is the only the middle category. So as we know, we have 11 categories. The middle category, which is the 50%, at the 50%, so the sixth largest change in inflation. And so the weighted median takes into account the middle band or the middle category of the 11 categories and how inflation has affected that category. And so we know there are now four types of inflation, rates of inflation that can be recorded. The headline inflation, which includes everything in the regimen, the underlying inflation rate, which it only includes, which it doesn't include the volatile changes in prices. The trimmed mean, which it only includes the 50% band and the weighted median, which only includes the middle category or the median category. So this is how the CPI actually can take into account different changes in inflation rates to make it more representative of the actual effect on our purchasing power. And now we have the last of all, which may possibly be the least relevant to the limitations is the idea that doubts may be cast over the base year. And as we know, we always have a base year for which we we'll refer inflation to. And at the moment, this base year for Australia is 1990. So there's always been a base year that they refer inflation to. And so what the what what um, skeptics to the CPI actually um, question is the relativeness or the relativity of this base year. So in some may say this may be inappropriate as a base year, which may which means that this year may appear more volatile or inappropriate. As a representative sample of our spending patterns throughout the next two decades, for example. And so, we, because we always need a base year to compare our inflation rate to, this this limitation cannot always be um, overcome, in a sense. And so, unless this year is representative, um, figures may be distorted or relatively more or less favourable, depending on whether this year is representative. So. The volatility of this year, um, the appropriateness or the trends of this year affect subsequent years since this is the base year of subsequent CPI figures. And so we can see that there are four limitations to the CPI. So firstly we have the lack of representativeness given by the only 100,000 goods and services surveyed in only metropolitan households. Secondly the inappropriate weightings given and this is a very hard concept or problem to overcome by ABS um, data analysts because they can't weight certain goods and services according to every specific household's needs. And thirdly, we have the inclusion of volatile items in the headline inflation rate, which can be overcome by analyzing the underlying, the trim mean, or the weighted median inflation rates. And lastly, is the doubt that be cast over the base year as a representative or a very solid or good year to base subsequent years' data on.